it is incumbent upon you to really let loose, really give up good energy for our first performer. This is the first person to take the stage, and they're going to make this whole evening happen. No pressure, but I promise it's going to be great. Our first performer is uh, uh, recently, actually, just got a, a master's in sexuality education. As well. yeah. I see that you all have sex. <laughs> nice. But tonight is here to talk about something altogether different. Who here listens to podcasts? Who here listens to podcasts about crime? Our first presenter is here to talk to you about why exactly that is. So to talk a little bit about the recent popular uptick in crime media, I want you all to give a warm welcome to Natalie Higgins! Can you hear me? Is this the proper height? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, my name is Natalie Higgins. I just got my master's in sexuality education, and I also have a bachelor's in psychology and sociology, and I'm going to talk to you about none of that. So we're going to be talking about true crime media today and reasons that people get into it, because there seem to be a lot of misconceptions floating around out there. Those of you who listen to those podcasts know what I'm talking about. Okay, so what is tri true crime media? Uh, it is any non-fiction media that deals with actual crimes that affect actual people. This can run kind of a very large gamut of mediums, from shows, documentaries, movies, podcasts, books, or any news coverage of the last election that we had. <laughs> Uh, there's a very, very large array that has recently popped up in a lot of uh, areas. Most of them surrounding murder seem to be the most popular one that is going around right now. Um, so, why do people like this? It's kind of the question. The myth that is going around is that we're crazy. We have clung on to a fad that is going to go away. Uh, so we're basically a bunch of bandwagon sociopaths. <laughs> Uh, because I would say that the most prolific true crime that has been going on has been going on since the late 80s, early 90s, and America's Most Wanted was founded on the idea that the public wanted to be involved in this. So, now that we have that out of the way, we can get into some of the real reasons why people go into true crime obsession. Uh, so I found four reasons in my extremely not scientific anecdotal research that I did on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you, Philadelphia Renos. <laughs> so, it's a family affair. In short, that means that somebody in your family got you into it. Either that can be as simple as somebody in your family also likes true crime. Pretty simple. Um, or you have a family member that was a first responder, a policeman, a uh, ER nurse, somebody who deals with crime on a regular basis. Or they have a family story that they told you about a family member who committed a crime or was a victim of a crime at some point that piqued your interest when you were very young. Uh, then we go on to what we refer to as hometown cases. Uh, so that is a specific case got you into it at some point. Uh, these can be local or national. On the local level, it's usually you knew the victims, you could have been in that place. On the national level, sometimes it's you fit the victimology, so you have uh, a lot of characteristics that it makes you think like, oh, that could have been me, or that could have been somebody that I know, and it goes up personal connection to it, uh, and then it also kind of fosters this idea that you want to be part of solving the crime. Uh, you want to be a part of the thing that catches the crime. <laughs> and there's also the taboo. You like it because you're not supposed to. It's the morbid cookie in the cookie jar. Uh, it's not. There's shock value, uh, and it tends to come from people viewing people who perpetrate these crimes as so incredibly opposite of themselves that they just need to delve into their mind because, like, what the hell could possibly be going on, right? Uh, so that is really the closest to the we're bandwagon sociopaths and we just want to know these things, but it's still not quite true. Uh, so the one that I want to talk about most is the defense mechanism. So we like it because we're scared of it. Uh, a lot of people don't really give much credence to this one, uh, but it's a means of protecting ourselves from our own fears. Uh, so Freud, I don't like Freud, but uh, you can have a few 
context on occasion with lots of context. Uh, so reaction formation in short is a defense mechanism where our actions manifest as the opposite of our fears. Uh, so a fear of victimization can turn into a true crime obsession. Uh, it can also in manifest in as simple of ways as you think your boyfriend's going to break up with you so you break up with him first. Uh, but there is the running joke that women don't watch true crime, we study it. Uh, so if we study it, we will know how to react if we ever end up in those situations, and we'll also know how to solve the next crime that comes to And all of this comes down to uh, us wanting to master our own fears. So whether that fear is from anxiety in general about becoming a victim, trauma of knowing a victim of a crime, or being a victim of the crime yourself, this gives a way to have a controlled environment to set our own limits for how much we engage with this content and then promote healing. And this all comes down to community afterwards. Once you take all of these factors in of how people get into true crime, there's really a community that is built around it that is built from shared fears, shared secret interests that you never thought you could tell somebody before, uh, family history that ties you to your family in ways that you might not otherwise be able to engage with them, and empathy for people who are in a bunch of different situations who come into a situation in a way that you may not have thought of in the first place. So, thank you very much.